Cut my 200 year old tree, in my yard? I'll cut your bank account. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. From time to time, you see beautiful trees that are old and protected. In the first story, an owner is lucky enough to have one in the garden. But unlucky when they're on vacation, as a jealous neighbor takes the opportunity to sneak onto their property, and cut down their original sequoia specimen, that's 200 years old. They shouldn't have done that. As there are laws that protect old trees, and they can be quite expensive. The second story features a vengeful citizen, who sends a questionable letter to a prison pen pal. While pretending to be his bully neighbor, causing a catastrophic rift in his neighbor's marriage. Oopsie. Lastly, ever feel like being watched? Imagine playing a video game, and this rush comes over you. When you look behind you, you see your neighbor's face in the window. Yep, let's talk about peeping Tom, who bragged too much, and talked his way into this episode. Before we start, whisper to the like button, that you would purposely forget it at the airport, when it relies on you to pick it up. Viewer discretion is advised. These revenge stories, might be disturbing to crazy neighbors. It's been two years and I can finally share my story. This is juicy, so get ready. We live in an old and big manor that has been split into three attached houses. The houses are about 150 years old and were built around five huge giant sequoias, which were about 200 years old. In the UK, giant sequoias are very rare and the two in our garden, up the house price by about 60,000 pounds. We lived next to two really nice neighbors, one young couple and one old couple. Now on to the actual story. Unfortunately, our old neighbors passed away, so their child and her family moved in, let's call her Jo. Jo became a pain in the ass instantly. We had been sharing chickens with the previous neighbors and Jo agreed to keep sharing them. However, on her nights of doing the chores she would constantly forget to put them away, so we would had to check them every night anyway. One night, her little brats thought it would be funny to open our personal duck pen. This led to a mass slaughter of our ducks, our chickens received the same fate. About two years ago, there was a big storm and one of her sequoias fell over and died. They were distraught, understandably, but from then on the jealousy started. She would constantly complain about how lucky we were to have two sequoias in our garden. But emphasized how our sequoia was creating too much shade in their garden, I can assure you it wasn't. There were a few dry threats like, they would chop it down or they hoped for the next storm to blow it down. But we just brushed it of as Joe being a pain. Until we came back from a holiday to France, only to find a huge 6 meter stump and nothing else. How the fuck do you get rid of a 100 feet tree in like 2 weeks? Two of our old British oak trees had been crushed as well. It forced my mom and sister into tears, and colored my dad's face to pure red. But in the end, we had no evidence that Joe had done it. When confronted, she claimed that there had been a storm and she had to get rid of it. Luckily, we had a security camera at the front of the house, but unfortunately, we didn't see her on that camera. You can get on the property unnoticed through the back if you go through a few fields. But we could only speculate. Out of nowhere, we were given an 8,000 pound bill for damages to her property, and to cover the fees for having the tree chopped down and removed. Let me add, the valuable wood alone, would have been worth a small fortune. We had lost all hope and didn't know what to do. But when two weeks had passed, my dad came running in from the garden. We had put up a wildlife camera a few months ago. And unexpectedly, it caught what happened to our tree. It caught everything on tape. She did it, she was responsible for the damages and killing our tree. We immediately teamed up with a lawyer and started our revenge. We also hired a tree surgeon, to give insight on the tree which would make it easier to estimate how far the costs of the damages really went. He said it was an original specimen brought into the UK in 1860, along with the two others that were in Elveston Castle Country Park. There were 218 around the UK in total, but now only 60 were left. He advised us to call out an engineer, because the roots might be in the foundation. Considering the tree is dead, the roots would become a risk because of rotting and would damage the house, so we would need to redo the foundations. Then we took Joe to court and sued them for damage to property, trespassing and lots of other smaller claims. The tree would cost 250,000, just to have another sequoia that was 200 years put in and looked after, which is basically impossible, plus the damage to the foundation which was 200k. The two damaged oaks, were another 25k. 
so with the smaller claims added, it went to about £500,000, which is around $700,000. She didn't stand a chance as soon as we revealed the footage to her and her lawyer, so she gave up. They had to move out to cover the costs. The neighbors owned a second smaller home which they moved back into. The people who were hired to cut the tree down, already made countertops out of the logs. They gave it to us for free as a apology gift. I believe they were truly sorry. And we have now paid off the mortgage, done a lovely loft and kitchen conversion with our kitchen counter and table made from the old sequoia. We have basically done up the house and garden as well, as plant a 60-year-old sequoia tree in the back garden. We feel bad for the old neighbors but we do visit their graves, because they were like family. Now have a new lovely family living next to us who we share chickens, ducks and pygmy goats with. They're very nice and I make a fortune while babysitting their kids. This happened a couple weeks ago, but I saw the result of it earlier today. A bit of backstory, I live in a predominantly Mormon area, but I am not Mormon. I receive quite a bit of criticism from my across the street neighbor, because of the religious difference. I'm assuming this because we've never interacted before, until he started fucking with me. He currently has 10 children. About a month ago, on trash day, he told one of his kids to kick my trash can over into the street. The kid did it, and I witnessed everything. This is not the first time he has kicked my trash over, and I figured it was a lost cause to go over there and ask them for some decency more than I already have. You could make the case that this doesn't make him all bad. That he didn't deserve what I would do just by kicking over a trash can, so here are some more details on his glorious persona. I'm the guardian of my younger sister. I got her a cat about a year ago, and the neighbor told me that the cat is not allowed on his side of the road. Okay, whatever. A couple days later, the guy called animal control on the cat because it was wandering on the sidewalk in front of his house. They said they couldn't do anything since it wasn't on his property. So neighbor takes the cat and drops it off at the animal shelter, pretending it's his. And tells them to put it down. They refuse without the papers and she's chipped. It's a whole situation. On the day they moved in, my little sister made them brownies and took them over, knocked on the door and waited. They didn't answer. So little sister wanders back across the road, and, when she gets to our front porch, looks back to watch the father look her dead in the eyes as he's throwing the treats, plate and all, into the garbage. He was guilty of other petty crappy acts besides these. So, that same day as kid kicked my trash can over, I was reminded by a friend about how I used to have a pen pal when I was younger before I moved. Later that night, I was browsing the web looking for a pen pal when I stumbled across a cool sounding site, prisonpenpals.com. I visited the site and, after clicking through a few dodgy links, was brought to an array of different prisoners who were looking for a pen pal. After doing a bit of browsing from there, I stumbled across a fellow who was on death row for first degree murder. The idea is you send an email, the guards print it out and give it to the prisoner, who then writes you a letter and it's delivered to your physical address. Feeling bad for this guy, but not wanting to give my address out, I remembered the asshole across the street. More out of curiosity than malice. I proceeded to write a very detailed letter about how I am a trapped, secretly gay Mormon man with 10 kids who is looking to start an extramarital affair with a prisoner. I put in his address and send. I had my hilarious, petty satisfaction. I expected nothing to come out of this. I thought he would be going through his mail, see the letter, not open it, toss it and think nothing of it after that. But boy, was I wrong. Of course, with it being a small town. This guy does run a small business here where one of my acquaintances works. I went in just earlier today and chatted with my acquaintance before he told me. Oh my god, did you hear about your neighbor? I said no because I hadn't and he filled me in on all of the details. Apparently, one of the neighbor's kids had brought in the mail, only for his wife to find it and read the letter from this prisoner responding to the joke letter that I wrote. I don't know the specifics of the letter, but I do know that his wife threw a big fit when he arrived home and made him pack his bags. My acquaintance informed me that this was not the first time neighbor had started or tried to start an affair with another man, and apparently this was the last straw for her. I am still shocked, horrified, and extremely amused by this predicament. I started renting a house about five years ago. I had always lived in apartments and I was excited to finally have some space and privacy. This was ruined within the first week by my prick neighbor who made my four years in that house miserable. 
He's in his late 40s or early 50s and despite seeming like a fully functional adult, he has never lived outside of his parents' home. The mom never spoke and the dad only spoke to me once, right after I moved in. He was polite, but avoided me from then on. For a long time I was trying to figure out if I had offended them or was somehow acting weird or suspicious to them. But I'm sure I didn't. So back to Tom, he spends every possible minute cleaning or admiring his truck, so he practically lives in the driveway. When he isn't bragging about some sketchy move that he just pulled on someone, he is hitting on the wives and daughters of anyone on the street. I moved in during the winter and during one such winter mornings, I started noticing footsteps in my yard. I found out that he was walking into my yard to look in my windows and see what I was watching slash playing during the nights. I bought a simple security system and put a few cameras up and this stopped. When I bought the camera system, I made sure I got thick curtains too. Then he started mowing my side yard. He would mow it the day after I did. I asked my landlord about this and was told that Tom, the creepy neighbor, considered it his property and kept arguing about the property line. It's just grass, so I let it go. If I had guests over, he would stare at them and sometimes make comments when I wasn't around to hear him. If I was in the backyard, he would have a reason to be in his backyard. If I was in the house or the front yard, he was in his driveway where he could see in my living room. If I was mowing the yard, he would get out a lawn chair and sit and watch, putting it away as soon as I was done. After a year or so, I just stopped caring about what he could see. If he wants to watch me play Fallout, then so be it, as long as he stays on his property. It came to a head when I caught him sending his dog into my front yard one morning, instead of letting it out into his fenced-in backyard like he normally would. I told him to stay on his side of the property line and he said that he was going to break into my house and smash my cameras and computer. Cops were called and he got off with a warning. Last fall I told my landlord that I was going to move out. During the conversation, I found out that Tom was on workers comp for an injury that he got at work. Plus that he was now bragging about how he was using his workers comp checks to set up his own under the table landscaping business. My landlord, like most of the neighborhood, doesn't really like Tom. The landlord's son and family live across the street and Tom has hit on the wife a few times over the years, but he has also started trying talk to their 17-year-old daughter. I waited for a day when he had his new work truck and trailer, with his name and number on the door, and I made a video of him working on his yard and carrying 50 bags of mulch and climbing ladders. I sent videos and pictures to the fraud department of the workers' comp office. Today, I found out that he was found guilty of fraud, ordered to pay back every dollar, and may end up in jail in the future. I am happily living in a new place that has a lot of land between me and the neighbors. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.